Hertz Finger is Director of Data Science at LinkedIn, but started his career as a quantum physicist. He switched to a business career and after Insean led sales and marketing teams for Dell. He then founded his own data analytics company and wrote a book about how companies can better use their data. Welcome to Alumni Experience Lutz. It seems like a slightly strange transition to go from really hard science to sales and marketing. How did that work? The question is why why would I ever, as a physicist, go into a sales and marketing role? Um, marketing is actually something very, very number-driven. Sales is something which is very, very number-driven. What is the likelihood that I, that somebody's buying? What's the propensity towards something? So if, if I do have times for two call, phone calls, who should I call yeah, out of 100? Um, you can do models, you have likelihood there. Now, in physics, you always have the complexity of having matter, like having a topic which people inherently don't really understand. It's complex, but you need to bring it to them. You need to explain to them the value. You need to explain to them what you're actually doing. If you're trying to explain those things, what, what you're trying to do from, from very, very technical stuff down to a message which somebody can accept, this is nothing else except sales. So the, the skill set, you need to be a good, good communicating in what you're doing in your physics is the same skill set you need in order to communicate other things. So um, there is actually a natural overlap of both areas. Okay, I, I kind of believe it. But let's talk about data science. Um, what does a data scientist do all day? What a data scientist does, doesn't do all day. Okay, um, today everybody talks about big data. And big data means, like, we are changing, like, the industry is changing. The industry is changing in, in terms of we can measure things we haven't measured before, make it digitalize. And mapping this to social interaction to human ways of thinking gives us an incredible power to predict things which we haven't seen before. That's a promise. The promise of you have a lot of data and when you have a lot of data you might be able to predict something. And I, I leave this up very vague now. The problem is that we have a lot of data. We believe there is value in the data because it helps us to cluster, to predict, to, to build. We didn't know the question. Now, have the question, find the question, and find the needed metrics to answer the question. That's the job of a data scientist. Who fits this kind of role? Who makes a good data scientist? There are loads of discussion about what is a data scientist. And then people say, well, they need to understand business, they need to understand engineering, and they need to understand mathematics, statistics. And in the middle, all overlap of all three is a data scientist. And there's some truth to it. So on my team, I hire uh, MBAs, I hire ex-consultants. And what we do, we ask them to learn Hive and Pig to understand data and technology. And I have statistician and data people who know everything about modeling. And we ask them to do presentation courses and talk to business partners and integrate them. But People coming from INSEAD are probably in, in none of those two camps. They're probably in the third camp, which means I need to understand what data can do. I need to understand what engineering can do to solve business questions. And I believe the future is there because it is not an engineering challenge to solve the Google problem. Once you know how to do it, it's easy. The question is, what do people want? What is my business model? That's the problem. You set up your own company, but you've recently got a job at LinkedIn. How did that come about? So I was looking around and I was at a conference, so I talked to people. And I, I actually spoke at the conference, so I was in the speaker's launch. And, uh, so my question was like, where should I go? And I asked one of the guys um, who was at LinkedIn at that time, and he's like, chat to us. So like next morning I had a... 15 minutes breakfast break with one of the senior guys at LinkedIn and he comes like after 15 minutes do you have time can you can you come in then I had eight hours of interviews and then they offered me this job I had a weekend to decide because otherwise the visa application wouldn't have worked so 
I flew home, had a long weekend with my wife, and we said, yeah, why not? Thinking about that decision, how do you generally make career decisions? I started as a physics physicist. That's great. It was awesome. But it wasn't right for me. I went into uh, marketing. It's great. It's awesome. It wasn't the right thing for me. I tried something in entrepreneurship, mi mixing technology and marketing. That felt better. Good. The company wasn't so super successful, like successful enough to, for me to sell it, but not like Facebook. So it was okay, but I think I can do better. Uh, and, and now I'm kind of like seeing, okay, wow, well, hold on. Like from that part, path I went down, there is actually something new, which is big data and so on. And that feels really exciting. Now ask me in five years, I probably will tell you, oh, it wasn't 100% what I wanted. But you have to go down the route and figure it out. And you will at any point in time, if you ask yourself, is this what I want? Then you will find the next step. And I think... By the time you actually found the answer, which is making you happy, maybe you come here might end, or you go, you know, by Warren Buffett says, he is excited from what he is doing. And that's the reason, like, I don't want ever retirement. I don't want to retire. I want to find something which excites me so much that I want to keep on doing it.